Hello everyone, my name is Michael SK, and welcome to Amatsutsumi. I really hope I'm like, just even a little bit close to pronouncing that correctly. I've never done a playthrough of a title that I can't even, I can't even pronounce the name properly, or I, at least I struggle. You know, darn me and my mispronunciations of English and Japanese words. Wait, what's going on? Wait, what's happening? No, 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 we don't want to watch that. We don't we don't want to go into that. Okay. Amatsutsumi. Yeah, that's that's the name of the game. Okay. Uh, one, did not know that that happened if I, you know, don't do anything. Uh, and two, that is how you properly pronounce the, the name of the game. But yes, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Uh, it has been a good while since I had... You know, I'm just going to throw myself in the system settings. That, that'll, that'll save us. It has been a long while since I've done something here on the channel... Uh, to purposely destroy my heart and I felt like this would be the game to do so I've been told that this is literally the title that will most definitely will uh, via via inside source and by that I mean somebody in my discord uh, you know who you are uh, but I've heard some good things about this one I, in general I've heard some really good things about purple software not only is it a pretty good color but apparently the titles that they put out are pretty dang good uh, Chrono Clock, I believe, is the title that I've been told to check out, and I still haven't. So, weird that I'm checking this one out before that, but it is on the list. A very long and growing list. But I wanted to check this one out, and truth be told, I actually already have. I was uh, checking this out with some of my Discord members, and I maybe got like two-ish hours in? Maybe three? I, I really don't know, and it's not going to translate well here because I obviously have to read aloud, and that's a little slower. And commentate, too. Like, we're already killing time. Um, so, I, I don't know when we'll catch up to where I left off, or if we will. It sort of depends on if I feel like this is a let's play or playthrough worthy game here on the channel. If you guys are even remotely interested. I actually did a poll of this to see if there was interest in me you know, turning the car around, going back to pick you guys up and to continue along, see if you guys were interested in that. I don't think too many people know about this title, to be totally honest with you. This may be escaping a little bit more uh, further away from the average consumer. You really got to go out of your way to hear about this one. Even so, it is officially translated and, and so forth. It's just not a title that's on Steam and I guess you really have to be paying attention and be in the loop to really know about this one. And that's another thing, this one isn't on Steam. What is with me and games that are either controversially not on Steam, uh, asterisk, or just straight up not on Steam? I guess in a way you can call this uh, controversially not on Steam, because I don't know why it's not, to be totally honest with you guys. Also, I can't read that. Like, I don't, I don't know what any of this is. But I think that is our main female character from the little bit that I have gone through. And I'm not going to spoil anything of what I've gone through. Do not worry. Even so, I kind of just did. But don't worry. It's, it's all good. I also hope that I adjusted the sound settings decently enough. I actually adjusted them. All right, we're really, we're really getting, getting off to a good start here. I adjusted them for when I was just kind of going through. And, and checking this out for my two-hour adventure or whatever. And I think that uh, that was a good baseline, to be totally honest with you guys. So we'll roll with that. And uh, if there's any adjusting to be made, we'll definitely make it. And that little symbol that you see on our text box, uh, that's not going away for a while. We'll have to deal with that. That is to basically show you guys that I've already gone through this part. So at least we have a good like symbol to show us how far I've gone and when the uh, the surprises really will begin to hit in the commentary. But without further ado, let us begin. Egg. Yes, indeed. Beneath the blazing summer sun, the ground is very hot. Hot enough that you could fry an egg on it. As I lie flat on my back in the dirt, I feel like my head is being cooked to perfection. Yes, I am an egg. And an egg I am. Is that what that said? That got confusing. But maybe my head isn't cooking. Maybe it's incubating. What will hatch out of my head? 
A chick? Maybe God? People ask whether the chicken came from the egg or the egg came from the chicken. But even if both chickens and eggs came from God, God might have come from an egg too. We really are losing it, goddamn. We gotta get out of the sun. Uh, or maybe inside the egg that is my head, and there is yet another egg. Wait, what on earth am I thinking? Yeah, exactly. My heat-addled brain has apparently been running off the rails. I can tell from my cramped muscles, weak body, and confused mind that I must be suffering from heat stroke. I've been making sure to stay hydrated, but it hasn't been enough. I've been walking through the mountains for several days without much food, and I must have sweated away too many electrolytes. I was so relieved to finally come across this man-made dirt path that I collapsed on the spot. Now I can't move a muscle. Could this be the end? Heat stroke of all the stupid... Actually, no. I shouldn't be so careless with my words. If this is to be my fate... I couldn't ask for a more fitting end. I had chosen to follow my heart, and if this is the result, so be it. I try to resign myself to my impending death as my consciousness begins to fade. Suddenly a dark shadow flits across my vision. Oh yeah, now that, that's, a, that's a good shadow right there. Something incredibly heavy smashes down on my face. And we scream. I managed to muster the strength to writhe on the ground. Talk about kicking a guy when he's down. <laughs> Through the pain, I hear a surprised but not very concerned voice somewhere overhead. <laughs> and there she is. There, there she is. I, I believe our, our main female character, or at least one of them. A long-haired girl is staring down at me. Now she's looking mortified. Apparently she hadn't noticed me lying on the side of the path. Not at all how I expected to meet my first outsider. Uh, it doesn't hurt. It isn't a real solution, but the pain in my face vanishes as soon as my voice reaches my ears. <laughs> Okay, so it's been like a couple or so weeks since I have touched this title. I miss this. I miss this uh, this track right here. It was so soothing. Like, I'm sure we've heard many variations of this very similar soothing track. Just everyday visual novel. I love it. Water. Salt water. The girl jumps up surprised and begins looking around. She produces some small tablet-like objects. See, I didn't even think these were like real things. She speaks to herself as she pops one of the objects into my mouth. As a powerful salty taste spreads across my tongue, I feel energy returning to my poor body. Thank you. As I salivate, it becomes easier to speak. Can I walk? Despite almost passing out a minute ago, I'm feeling more alive thanks to the rock salt which is somehow turning sweet in my mouth. The stomp to my face helped too, but I'm not feeling lively enough to actually stand up. On the other hand though, I can't just keep lying here waiting for death. I decide that it's safe to push myself a little uh, for a little while. Body, stand up. I mutter softly so that only I can hear. Instantly, without any conscious effort, my palms move to brace me against the ground as my legs and arms push me to a standing position. Uh, ugh. I reel. Unsurprisingly, I suddenly feel dizzy and my heart is pounding. I'm not allowing myself to feel the pain, but my body is in dire shape. And I know I might drop dead at any moment. Yeah, let's go. 
Oh, count me in. My... My name's Makoto. The girl is ready to help me walk down the path, but I want to make sure to introduce myself while I'm still conscious. Kokoro. How lewd. I start to correct myself and call her Oribe-san, but I notice she's chuckling happily. Is it unusual? Huh. Is that so, I think to myself. Head nod. I whisper to myself and my head, uh, my head nods in response. One more. Body walk. Yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get around to what that is all standing for. Do not worry. The two of us slowly make our way down the path, and after about 20 minutes, we come upon a settlement. A settlement? A town. I'd love to inspect every inch of it, but I'm in no state for it, physically or mentally. I feel the reaper breathing down my neck at every step, but I can't even muster a cold sweat. Koko, uh, Kokoro, excuse me, stops and turns to look at a building on the side of the road. Oh, by the way, I've never played a visual novel that had these dynamic text boxes, and I did check out how it looked with the uh, static text box, and you know what? I gotta say I prefer this. It's very different, but it makes the experience so much livelier just by a text box moving around on the screen. The house is built in a Japanese style that isn't unfamiliar to me, but it doesn't look like an average house. There's a sign that says Cafe Origami. Oh, how, how, how nice of you. Oh, by the way, Mama here, looking fine. I'm just saying, you know, my, my two hour venture, or whatever amount it was, you know, Getting to meet her was quite the treat. Honestly, meeting all the characters has been fun in my uh, little ventures, so I am excited to move further on. When I follow Kokoro into the cafe, a woman who looks a bit like Kokoro looks at me curiously. She's wearing highly decorative clothing, so I can tell she must be of high, high social standing. <laughs> Kokoro looks at the two of us in turn, uncertain what to say. This conversation is taking an odd turn. Even so, we quite literally started the conversation, like, not even a minute ago. But I'm busy being impressed by how nice and cool it is in the room. It's the height of summer just outside the door. But inside the house, it's almost like winter has come. I've heard of this. It's a machine called an air conditioner. Incredible. I mean, it worked in Evangelion, right? Just, you know, a, a house pet penguin or whatever? Oh, man. Polar bears will murder. Straight up. They do not care. I want to ask what a penguin was, but I can't find the right moment to butt in. This conversation is moving too fast for me to keep up, and I'm clearly out of my depth. Oh, 
何か飲ませてあげようと思ってあらまああらあらそういうことは早く言いなさい寝れない Oh, sorry about that. I gaze blankly at the two of them. The Kokodo places a kettle full of water on top of something, and I hear a snapping sound as she lights a fire with just one finger. You really don't use firework for cooking, do you? Huh? Maki? Oh, oh, nothing.、Uh, that machine I see emitting flames in front of Kokodo probably isn't anything special to the average person. Soon I find a teacup placed before me. I put it to my mouth. This is an excellent tea with a fine flavor and barely any aftertaste, but right now my body only cares about the water content. Ah, I finally feel like I'm back to normal again. Thank you very much. Huh? Is there something strange about my yukata? I spread my arms to show her my yukata,、uh, which was admittedly less than fresh after my days long hike through the mountains. <laughs> ah, I get it. I did know that people usually wear Western clothing here in the outside world, but I didn't have any other clothes. No more time travel visual novels. I, I gotta get away from those. The two of them are whispering to each other. And it's not like I can't hear them at this distance. I know what time travel is, and that actually might be pretty close to the truth in a certain sort of way. Kokodo comes closer to me with a smile on her face. Have you guys ever been like really close to passing out? Like, I I technically have color to my face most of the time. I'm very fair skinned, so there is some color to me, and I'm used to seeing that color in me. There was one time, and actually two, I think it was both times I tried giving blood. I did not hydrate myself well enough. All color totally drained from me. I looked terrifying to myself, even. Straight up. Stay hydrated, folks, please. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, I'd rather you didn't. If they find out where I am, they'll force me to go back. I start to get flustered, but then it hits me. Wait. I don't even remember where I came from, so we can't contact anyone anyway. Right. I'm not sure whether I should say more, but they did save my life after all. I should at least tell them something.、Uh, the place where I lived before is deep, deep in the mountains, and it took me several days of hiking before I got to that road I collapsed on.、Uh, four, I think. I try, to I try to remember how many times I'd slept along the way. There are no telephone lines there, or even electricity. I don't have any family either, so I don't think it'll be necessary to contact anyone. I think there were two or three cell phones in the village. Their batteries were all flat, of course. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's like, you know, hardcore Amish villages and such in the United States still. And, you know, probably similar areas in the rest of the world where they're just totally cut off from civilization.、Uh, they don't rely on electricity or really any advance advancement in technology or medicine. It's strange, but you know what? Each their own, whatever. We are a pet after all. You know, screw human rights and whatnot. Apparently, they've decided to treat me like a charity case or even a basket case, but who could blame them? 
I'm so ignorant of the world that I might as well be a clueless time traveler, whatever. Now then, what to do next? I slowly draw the tea into my mouth as I think. Who am I? I am he who speaks, bane but a word, boon but a word, I whisper. Though I can't explain everything to them, I'm simply not equipped to survive on my own. And these two seem nice, and if possible, I'd like to ask for their help. And anyway, my longing for deep and fulfilling communication with others was the reason I ran away in the first place. I think back over the last few days. Oh, here we go. Four days. It seems like a lifetime ago. Four days ago, I was still back in that hidden place. Ah, yes, the hidden leaf village. Quite hidden, all right. That day, I was looking out over the village, feeling the gentle early summer breeze at my back. This place was too quiet. The smell of the flooded paddy fields, the sound of the rice plants and the grass swaying in the wind, and nothing else. No human sound, no voices, no words existed in this place. As the distant descendants of the ancient mountain gods, as we inherited the power of Kododama, which entered into our words when we spoke, and so we spoke rarely. Our village was as otherworldly, or was an otherworldly place, where people interacted with each other only by the slightest movements and gestures. I am he who speaks, bane but a word, boon but a word. But while other worlds like our village were all well and good a thousand or even a hundred years ago, nowadays it's hard to stay truly isolated. No matter how different our village was, it was still connected to the rest of the earth. In fact, at regular intervals, some adults would be chosen to put on western clothing and leave the village on expeditions. When they returned, they brought with them medicines, farming equipment or fuel, and various useful items made with strange materials like plastic or aluminum. I still hadn't seen the outside world with my own eyes. But the fragments of it I'd seen, brought back by these returning adults, had been more than enough to steal my heart. A voice reverberated deep within me. As I stood there, I heard, foot I heard footsteps behind me. I turned and saw one of the other villagers walking toward me. He glanced at me briefly as he passed by and continued walking silently toward his house. Neither of us had spoken a word, nor had I expected otherwise. I just wish I could greet someone once in a while. I gave voice to my thoughts. Good morning, hello, how are you, good evening. Greetings, words of closeness, words of courtesy. The words quickly dispersed, carried away on the summer breeze. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's what those brackets were. Kododama, and we'll, we'll see a little bit more of that, but it is their power. I returned home and put away my farming implements. The day's work was done, but this close to the summer uh, solstice, I often had time to spare before the sunset. I look around the inside of my house and the fading light. I was living here all alone. When I was a young child, an endemic, or epidemic, excuse me, had swept the village and both of my parents had succumbed. The epidemic had come to the village from outside, unwittingly brought back by people returning from an expedition. If we had been more isolated, we would have been safe. But on the other hand, if we'd been less isolated, our immunity would be stronger, and we would have had access to modern medicine, which could have cured the disease easily. In a way, the outside world caused the deaths of my parents, excuse me, but in a way, it also could have saved their lives. Beyond the borders of the village, both good and evil awaited. My obsession with the outside world was likely caused by this, uh, dic uh, dic dic fuck, goddamn, whatever that word is, sorry. Like I said, pronunciation is my enemy. I've been aware of since my early childhood. I couldn't think of anything to do, nor did I have any bit of work left, so I decided to leave the house for a bit. See, I only passed, like, 5th grade English. Past that, it was like, yeah. 
Walking along the mud banks lining the flooded paddy fields, I looked around to make sure nobody was watching and slipped into a thicket. As I pushed further into the dusky woods, the air became colder and I began to hear the sound of water. Also, I love this. I love that the backgrounds are animated. It's something so simple, slight, but again, it really adds a lot. It really does. I, you know, huge appreciation to the work that's gone into this. I had arrived at the bank of a mountain stream. Making sure not to slip on the mossy stones underfoot, I made my way to a certain tree and withdrew a metal box from a hollow in its trunk. I opened the box and took out several books wrapped carefully in a plastic bag. These were manga and novels, books that were forbidden in the village. Probably someone on a shopping expedition had been like me with a fancy for outside culture and had secretly brought these books back with them. I would read through each of these books dozens of times and had completely memorized their contents. Still, I carefully picked through the collection, one by one until I finally settled on a manga. It was a weekly, it said on the cover that it was published once every week. Inside it was depicted all the, er, inside was depicted all the richness of human relationships. Yes, it was all about communication. A view into a world where people were free to use words, free to hurl their emotions and desires at each other. The only thing I found disappointing about these stories is that they had no ends. To be continued next week. There were no beginnings, no ends, just tantalizing middles. School. A place of learning where boys and girls my age gathered together. As schools were the most common setting for these stories, and it seemed that even in the outside world, schools were considered special places. I wished I could, I wish I could go to a school one day. Oh, a voice. I was startled to hear my name being called. Someone had come right up next to me, but I had been so engrossed in my reading that I hadn't noticed. I looked up and saw a familiar face, one I'd known since I was a child. Uh, well, for forgive me for this one. Uh, Ko Koizuka Mana was my only close friend in the village. She was also my fiance, and I loved her dearly, though I often found her hard to deal with. <laughs> I stared. Mata was the only one who knew about this place and about my passion for, forbi for forbidden books. Excuse me. Nope. She laughed gently. You just startled me, that's all. It's not naughty. These books are only taboo because the people of our village decided they were. Mana nodded as she took off her sandals and put her feet into the water. Well, this is nice. I'm sure I'm sure nothing's going to come of this. She always became talkative as soon as the two of us were alone together, which was just a t just as taboo as my book reading. Also, like I have no idea how to get rid of the stuff at the top, so I'll probably do every time we come up on a CG, I'll just get rid of everything for a brief moment, enjoy the scenery and all that, just take it all in and figure out what I want to use as a thumbnail for the episode. Honestly, it's the latter that I do that for, just in case. You never know. You really never know. To us, conversation was a game. A risky game that we had to play in secret lest anyone else hear. As long as you avoided commands or strong declarations, your Kotodama power wouldn't enter into the words you spoke, but of course, it was easy to slip if you weren't careful. And that danger was what made it fun. Mana adjusted her shawl and asked me the same question and she always did. That was... that was interesting. At that moment, a small flurry of faintly blue-tinged snow drifted across my sight. Once someone had used their Kotodama power on Mana, saying, It's snowing and it's so cold. And so to this day, snow has always, or snow was always falling around her, even in the height of summer, both indoors and out. Other people couldn't touch the snow, but could only see glimpses of it occasionally. But to Mana herself, it was very real and very cold. I'm not as much of a dreamer as you think, 
Even I know that the world outside the village isn't some heavenly place where everything's wonderful all the time. I ignored the snow and answered her question. She never liked it when people mentioned the snow. I just want to see it and experience it for myself. That's all. I weighed her words. Surely she wasn't just talking about reading manga. No, it seemed that she had guessed the truth. That I was itching to actually leave the village as soon as possible. Honestly, I don't really know why I'm so impatient to see it. But I always hear a voice. It says, you must leave. When I'm alone in my bed at night and I hear that voice, my heart stirs and I feel like I have to escape from here. We've been commanded with the power of Kododama. Maybe. Mana looked down at her feet and thought for a while. And then she looked up at me. Well, gamers, what do you think happened? Would you come with me, Mana? I carefully deflected her question with a question of my own. It was a precariously balanced question. Even I wasn't sure whether I was just joking or whether I was extending her a serious invitation. Mana didn't answer right away. But soon she let out a small sigh. I... It looks like we're not answering. I moved my mouth, but Mana's Konodama wouldn't let me speak. Hmm. Mana. Apparently I could still say words that weren't answers. I rubbed my throat and looked at her. Only to finally realize what was going on. Mana was grinning in amusement. That grin can only mean one thing. She was up to something. And I was about to be the hapless victim of that something. Mana, don't. I tried to tell her not to say anything more. If I phrased it as a strong command, my Kododama could stop whatever she was trying to do to me. But I was just a whisper too late. And in any case, her Kododama was one of the strongest in the history of our clan. Even if we had spoken at exactly the same time, I'm sure I would have lost the exchange. And now we can't move. So that's basically how it all works. That's what those brackets mean. Whenever they speak, that means that their power is coming in. And whoever they're speaking to is going to be affected. It's as simple as that. And the reason why I'm being so adamant on explaining it is because it kind of took me a little bit to figure that out. I am pretty slow. My entire body froze in place, and even my lips couldn't move. My senses were fully intact, but I was finding it draining to hold this position indefinitely. She affected a sweet sigh. Isn't that like the same thing as killing someone and then asking them, Look what you made me do. Why'd you make me do this? Mana sidled up, or sidled up, whichever one of those works, up to me and uh, put her hand up to my cheek. As she came closer, I felt the air chill, like I was lying next to a block of ice. But through Mana's low body temperature, I was indirectly feeling the effects of the snow Kododama that Mana suffered from. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mana placed her lips on mine. Well, you know, they are, you know, together, I guess. Since I had been in the middle of a sentence, my mouth was half open and Mana's tongue entered it easily. Yeah, so, you know, spoiler alert, this is an age scene coming up. Uh, we're literally only like a half hour in. Uh, this is most definitely like the earliest fucking hentai shit that has come up in a visual novel I have ever touched. She pushed her lips against mine harder and ventured further in. Paralyzed, I could do nothing but follow the path her cold tongue traced around the inside of my mouth. I did like kissing. Oh, and 
another thing. I am most definitely skipping anything sexual. You bet your bottom dollar I ain't showing shit, boys. That shit is getting blacked out. But, Patreon. Patreon. I did like making love as well, that's always fun. As my fiance, Mono was naturally my first partner, and I was hers, and we had done the deed many times. While verbal communication was forbidden in the village, physical intimacy was encouraged, especially since our clan was prone to infertility. Ah, oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Before long, Mana's hand found and opened the hem of my yukata and began si uh, sliding along my lower body. She stroked her delicate fingers up the inside of my thigh, inching closer and closer to my groin. I wasn't opposed to the direction things were going, but I couldn't protest even if I wanted to. All I could do was exhale my warm breath into her mouth. She accepted that breath into her throat along with my saliva. That's nasty. She withdrew her face as she continued to stroke my crotch. Mana's skin was usually pale because of the cold, but now there was a touch of redness to it. Ah, uh, that's messed up. That was a strange thing to be impressed by, I thought as she gazed up at me. Oh, she being specific now. Ugh. First thing I do is take in a deep breath. Uh, hey, Mana. She spoke absent-mindedly as she rubbed my genitals. My eyebrows contorted. Mana having her way with me while I was unable to move a muscle. That was a very attractive proposal. Now that is a kink for a lot of people. Though she said she enjoys tormenting me, I knew that her love for me was true. So I knew that if I just let her keep going, what awaited me would be something very pleasurable indeed. And she knew that I knew that, which is why she let me speak again. Members of our clan would never be truly defenseless as long as our voices were intact, even if we were tied up or had our limbs broken. And since Mana wasn't speaking at that moment, I could immediately bring an end to this if I wanted. Are you sure you want me- are you sure you want to stop? As she was testing me. Okay, you know what? That's the that's the line I was waiting for. That that right there. No. No, no, no. You guys can't use that in the real world. Um, like my university system, they made us like go through this yearly thing where it's like, alright, you know, this is this is what constitute is rape, and this is, you know, okay sex and consent, and this is what you should do at a party. Or maybe you just shouldn't go to a party and, and all that other shit. So, yeah, it's like really well put into my mind that no, no, silence ain't consent. Even in this village, it ain't consent. She kissed me again and began moving down my body. Exhaling as she passed over my chest, she finally knelt between my legs, usually a submissive pose. And today it made me feel even more helpless than before. I think we're good to just skip along here, to be totally honest. Um, I don't think there's anything else that happens here. I'm pretty sure there isn't. After whispering those words, she set to work. Yep, I think we're good to just move on here. But if there is anything, you guys will know. Okay, so I went a little bit too quick. Uh, let's see. Yep, I, I was just, I found out the power of the control key, and I was just really gaming it up there. Uh, so let's see. Uh, so she was saying that, you know, I love you, we responded, no more excuses. I knew that the time had come. It was time for me to, to make the decision of my life. I lay in my bed unable to sleep as usual. Summer nights were short, which made the, uh, made them feel all the longer. My heart stirred. Uh, so if you click the player uh, to play their voice. Aha! Ikinasai. There it is. Leave. And go where? I replied to the phantom voice. My desire to experience the outside world grew stronger with every passing day. By now, it had become a weight that I could feel deep inside my body. 
If it were just simple curiosity, I could easily wait until I grew old enough to be chosen to join a shopping expedition like Mana had said. It wouldn't take too long, a few years at most, but it wasn't simple curiosity. Here we go. Where would I go? Would the place I chose end up being worth going to? Who did I want to become and what did I want to do with my life? I am he who speaks bane but a word, boon but a word. That was a mantra passed down in our clan, said to describe our true nature. We were the descendants of gods and holders of the power of Kododama. Our clan and our village were the only world I knew. And yet, they say this is a special power, but then who are we supposed to use it on when we can't even speak to each other? I didn't want to just see the outside world. I wanted to touch and feel it. And above all, I wanted to speak to people. Again, where would I go? And would the place I chose really be worth giving up everything? Worth leaving behind my birthplace and everything I'd ever known? I knew the answer. The answer was that there was no answer. Nobody else can tell you how much anything is worth to you. You have to go see and decide for yourself. You'll never know what awaits you at your destination until you go there. And the places you visit in your search for the answer will become the signposts on your path forward. I rose from my bed. I lit a fire in the hearth, steamed some rice, and made some onigiri. I, rounded all, I rounded up all three of my bamboo canteens and filled them with water. Rummaging through my chest of drawers, I found some paper money stashed among my parents' old kimonos. Money that they had likely kept aside for use during their next shopping expedition. And that was it. I scanned the house to make sure I hadn't forgotten anything, but my preparation was complete. I was, or it was best to travel light when walking through the mountains. Also, the fewer things I took with me, the longer it would be before anyone in the village realized I had left. I had thought about it, dreamed about this moment so many times. I made one last check of the house, just in case. Now that it was finally time, saying goodbye to my old life was harder than I imagined. I'm sorry, Mana. Since I didn't have any parents, Mana was the only person from the village who I would really miss. But I couldn't keep subjecting her to my selfishness. It was time to go. I left the house. And the rest was history. Or something along those lines. Outside, the sky was covered with the deep darkness that came right before dawn. As I approached the edge of the village, I paused and looked back the way I'd come. This place was my home, where I was born and raised, and it had been my whole world, and now I might never lay my eyes on it again. I looked long and hard to make sure that I'd never forget. The words had always sounded insistent, but now that I was really leaving, they sounded reassuring instead. Time to go. I put my resolve into words and took my first step into the unknown. This is what, uh, this is, you know, I was going to say it's a pro gamer move, but I don't know. It's scary. Well, that was all well and good, but at the time, I sure didn't think it would take a whole four days to find any other signs of human life. In hindsight, maybe I should have prepared by researching and planning where to go instead of zigzagging randomly through the mountains, trying to throw off uh, my imagined pursuers. Hey, at least I didn't run into any bears. And when it comes down to it, it's just like me to dive headfirst into things without a plan. Haha. <laughs> uh... As I'm staring into space, lost in my thoughts, Kokoro bends down and peers at my face. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm fine. I feel much better now, thanks to the both of you. So I don't think I need to go to the hospital. It's true, I feel much more alert after drinking the salted kelp tea and resting in this cooled room. So, about where I came from. The two of them saved my life, so I tell them the truth. I tell them that the village I grew up in was deep in the mountains cut off from civilization. I tell them how my overwhelming curiosity about the outside world led me to escape from the village. 
I tell them about how I have no family, and how both my parents died in an epidemic. I tell them about how I've always wanted to live in a real town. The only thing I don't tell them about is my Kododama power. Yeah, it's so isolated that I might as well be a period film actor or a time traveler like you guessed. Well, I have this much. I take out the paper money I stashed in the sleeve of my yukata and showed it to Azuki-san. And it's very wrinkled after four days in the mountains. Oh, I'm fine sleeping on the ground as long as I have something to keep the morning dew off me. And I can till my own field so I'll have food to eat. What? Uh, uh, can't I? Mm. I see. Can't till a field, huh? Hmm. Well, that's my entire plan right out the window, I guess. In that case, I guess I'm going to have to forage for wild vegetables and fruits. Maybe catch some fish in the river, try not to starve, you know. Kokoro looks at me aghast. Then she looks over at her mother. ねえ、お母さん、何、心の。あの、困ってる人がいるなら、私は助けてあげたいかなって思うんだけど。うん。その、人には親切にしなさいってお母さんいつも言ってるし、誠くん悪い人じゃないと思うし。Uh, excuse me. I decide there's something I need to say. Uh, no, that's not it. Actually, I just wanted to ask. What do you mean by a good person specifically? Huh? Uh, sure, I've lived by myself, so I always cook my own meals. Sure, I can do that. Uh, why? Uh, we didn't have either dogs or cats in the village, but uh, I guess we saw tanukis and boars once in a while. What? My eyes widen as Azuki san points directly at me. I really needed to get used to all these modern loan words, but we mostly only use native Japanese words back in the village. Luckily, I've seen part time and diet plenty of times in the books I've read, so I'm able to keep up for now. So I just have to cook food at this cafe? Well, that sounds doable. I remember that I'm still holding the wad of bills. Hey, I don't know how much this money is worth, but would you accept it? Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to work for you, but I'm sure my ignorance will cause you all kinds of troubles in the near future, so... Yeah. Kokoro looks surprised that Azuki accepted the bills. Azuki-san takes the bills I gave her and hands them to Kokoro. なるほど。彼が何か買いたい時とか必要なものがあったら。
爆発だーって感じだもんねダイエット中なの取っ払だね Yeah, we're just not following along, are we? I don't really get what they're saying, but it sounds like they've come to a conclusion. I dust off my hands. Alright then. What should I start off with? Kokoro hesitates a little. It seems like she has something to say. But she quickly turns to me and smiles. It's like a flower is blooming right before my eyes. Okay. Hey, you shouldn't run in the hallway. What if you tripped and fell? Kokoro is running toward the back of the cafe. <laughs> Azuki san is watching us in amusement. Azuki san. May I enter the house? Thank you. Azuki san sat, uh, suddenly has a serious look on her face. I cock my head to the side. Of course, I would never harm her, and I have no intention of doing so. She saved my life. If anything, I'd like to help her out as much as I can. <laughs> the what? <laughs> Azuki-san smiles. I'm not sure what she's talking about, but for now I head to the back of the cafe where Kokoro went. And I think we can end the episode here. I think this is an okay time to end this one. Plus, I got something to do, like, right now. So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll save it here, and next time we'll get our little tour of the house and, you know, see what happens next. I mean, I know what happens next, but that's not the point. I'm excited to, uh, to see some things again before we go into the new territory, and obviously I am excited for the new territory for myself, but I hope this was interesting to you guys. I mean... Uh, again, it doesn't seem like many people know about this one, or at least it's getting more in towards the niche territory. So uh, whatever I can do to kind of get this out there and to show you guys something a little different, something that will darn sure break my heart, hopefully. I am hoping for that. I don't know why. But yeah, thank you all for watching this episode. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like. If this is any bit interesting to you guys, the playthrough and the game, be sure to subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.